Anthony Joshua has joined us. Um, That's right. Saturday, June 1st, Anthony Joshua is defending his title at MSG against Andy Ruiz Jr. Now, we start with this, Anthony. First, we welcome you to the show. This is your first fight in the United States, and you fought in front of 90,000 fans at Wembley Stadium in England. Does fighting his, his intros his intros at Wembley Stadium look like uh, when Drago comes out in Rocky <laughs> Four? So is it does it mean something to you to fight at MSG, Anthony? Does it mean something? It's everything, man. You know, imagine when you first start out and let's say you're from Africa, Asia, Europe. You tend to watch the American stars of boxing. So my guy was like uh, Mike Tyson and so on. Then you get to know about Muhammad Ali and all these greats and. Then you learn about the history of Madison Square Garden and the magic that had come out of America. So to be here is like I'm putting my name just alongside some of the greats that have been there. But what I go on and do with my career is now stumping my name alongside these greats. So it, it's hopefully the start of something special. So, uh, Eric Anthony, uh, I'm gonna, let me be totally blunt with you. Yes, sir. I'm a fan. Thank you very the, much. The Klitschko fight, I remember where I was when I watched it. And the Klitschko fight to me was the first great heavyweight fight that we'd seen in a, in a long time. Okay. And I thought for a second it was the best Vlad Klitschko we'd seen in years. Okay. And then you come back yeah. and beat him in dramatic fashion. Oh. We have a new great heavyweight. Mm. Alongside that, we have Deontay Wilder, who's yeah. building his resume, and Tyson Fury, who drops 100 pounds, yeah. gets himself back in shape. Yeah. Explain to me why you are not the one to blame for not being involved with Fury and Wilder. Because we got a fight out of those two. Mm. And it was a damn good fight. Correct. Really surprised me. Correct. And I, I saw Wilder a few weeks ago, or a couple months ago before his last fight, and I'm seeing him again later this week, okay. where I'm sure he will put the onus on you. Yeah. You tell me why it's not Anthony Joshua's fault that we haven't seen one of these fights happen for you yet. Why can I say it's not Anthony Joshua's fault? So I just put it like this, really. The most recent offer I made to the, one of the best heavyweights in the division, Luis Ortiz, who's fantastic. Who's a fantastic fighter. Um, so he, and we're going to talk financials because that is what kind of gives people incentive to fight some of the best fighters in the division. So he's, he made a paycheck against Deontay Wilder, $500,000 to fight. And he took that and he fought Wilder and he had a great fight and he lost. That was at the Barclays Center, yes. So then I was looking for an opponent for June 1st at Madison Square Gardens. And we offered Luis Ortiz $6 million to fight. And he said we gave him a low ball offer. That is not enough. So why I mentioned Luis Ortiz is because now let's flip reverse back when we went to fight Deontay Wilder. So we gave Deontay Wilder the opportunity to fight in Wembley yes. in front of 90,000 people. And what did you offer him for that fight? We offered him $15 million. 15? Yeah. And what were you going to take for that fight? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take my because the, no, 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 because no, I'm the, saying. Because the word was, <laughs> the word was you wanted the fight at Wembley, yeah. but you were going to make somewhere probably near $100 million. I wish. And De or, and, or $50 million, And Deontay I'm was going to speak to my if, if there was $100 million, I'm going to speak to my management because someone's taking some but of that you, money. But you agree that you, you, do need, you do need Deontay or Fury to get the monster payday, the, the, the biggest payday possible. Yeah, 100%, 100%, but, and that's the mega fight. Like, put the payday aside. The reason why I spoke about finance is because I feel that is what should incentivize fighters. Also, with that aside, what I was gonna get to, aside from the finance and the biggest audience, is that he's fighting for all of the belts. I've got four of the major belts. So he should be biting at the opportunity to beat me to tell the world I'm the king. If he beats me, he's the king. I've got four of the belts. What, what more can you want from someone? So that's what I say. Finance aside, the biggest audience aside, you have the chance to own all of the belts. So that's why it baffles me now. When I go back from Ortiz, the opportunity he turned down, to Wilder, the opportunity he turned down, when he was earning $2 million a fight, we upped the level. I've been trying, honestly. But all I say now is this, is that I'm sure these guys have got really smart people around them managing them. So whatever decision they're making, they're probably for good reason, but their decisions have not involved fighting me. And it's not me anymore that's upset. The fans are losing up. And the longer they leave it, the better I believe I'm getting. 
So they're only going to make it harder for them. Well, or, the, or the better the chances that one of you guys gets knocked out and the interest in the fight goes away. Ah, so who was the situation when this happened with? I was talking about this, but it's happened before in history where someone has a warm-up fight thinking that they're just going to go and box someone, have a warm-up fight, and, f and then they get beat on the way there. Hey, Buster Douglas was a warm-up fight, you uh, know? Ex and look at that. But, that is in history today. But this is how this, the fans lose out on this. The fans they're not know. getting the fight they want, and what ends up happening historically is they end it's up getting the fight way too past when people really care about it yeah. and that's why the heavyweight division gets in trouble right yeah and even though the fight happens and everyone's like wow the fights happen after they're saying well was it too late yeah well lennox lewis mike tyson was too late yeah um uh, you know lewis Pacquiao, mayweather way too late yeah um so that's one of the things that worries me and i mean i'll tell you the truth i'm interested because you're fighting in the u.s yes sir but i'll tell you what your fight at the garden on june 1st it's all risk because I'll tell you what, if you lose to that guy, Anthony, oh. I'm going to be severely disappointed. <laughs> I've watched the tape. He makes Buster Douglas look like, you know, Vlad Klitschko. So, I mean, if I lose, you're never going to see me again. You know? <laughs> you can't lose to this guy. Michael, have you I seen this guy? I, I, first of all, I'm looking at him right now. That was one of the questions I want to ask him. First of all, you look like you're, you know, you're 15. You don't have a mark on your face. <laughs> Do you ever get hit? Me? Yeah. Oh, but they broke my nose, my bones, my knuckles are bruised. I I'm a, I'm a, I'm a old war horse. <laughs> you, 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 Michael, you really should go back one day if, if you have a flight or whatever and, and watch his fight with Vlad Klitschko on, uh, on YouTube. It was, it was truly Klitschko's last stand, and it was truly a heroic moment that made you. What's it like coming out, though, in front of a crowd like that? Because that is unusual. In the States, we don't have a fighter who's beloved like you are. Floyd Mayweather is not beloved. Okay, I understand. There's the last fighter, who, American fighter, who was truly beloved in that way. I mean, we, you know, Mickey Ward and Arturo Gatti yeah, had yeah, a certain yeah, sort yeah, of yeah. thing. Yeah. And, of course, Tyson was Tyson. Yes. But we've never had a fighter where the whole country rallies. What's it like when you come out? I mean, Don, it's like you think... Um, Apollo Creed's coming out, and James Brown's going to perform <laughs> Living in America. Like, what is that like, though, for 90,000 people for just you? The first time I boxed in front of the 90,000 people was against Klitschko, right? And um, what it was like, I, it, it was just a feeling where I said to myself, there's losing, and there's losing and getting embarrassed because Klitschko can punch. He can hit hard. And that's just the feeling is that I'll give everything I've got, but the scary part about the sport is that I just don't want to embarrass myself because these guys, I think we're in a new era now where the guys are six foot nine, 18, 19, 20 stone, big guys. So I just said, you know what? I'm going to ride the wave of all these supporters. I'm going to give it my best. And whatever happens, happens. That's, that's exactly my mindset when I went in there. No stress. Now, this fight is Saturday, June 1st. It's against Andy Ruiz Jr. It's expected to sell out. But if you go to MSG.com right away to purchase tickets, you will not get shot out. Tell us something, Anthony, about Andy Ruiz Jr. What type of fighter is he? What do you worry about with him? Andy Ruiz is a, is a selective puncher. He does not waste punches, meaning when he punches, he throws with intent. So I feel like I have to make sure my hands are in good position. I always say a tall fighter is fine, but we're used to boxing tall fighters as well, short fighters. Andrew Ruiz only boxes guys bigger than him, so he's used to guys like me. He knows the, the pitfalls and the mistakes we make. Low hands, throws a jab, counter punches. So he's going to be comfortable in the ring. I've got to adapt my style to someone shorter. Sometimes I have to adapt to someone taller and so on and so forth. Andrew Ruiz is from uh, Mexican heritage. We know that they have a good um, love for the sport of boxing. And he's been at world level. He fought Joseph Parker in a, close de in a close decision, which he lost. But some people say he won. Some people say he lost. I'm not too sure. I don't really make an opinion on that. I leave that to the judges. But what I'm trying to say is that the man is a world level fighter. He's not someone that I can overlook and not someone that I can take lightly. No, and he's not very light. Um, he's 261 pounds, I believe. Yeah. That's selective, how much you weigh, right, Pete? Selective puncher, not a selective eater. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, he looks like me physically. He looks like he's on the same gym regimen as me. So that's why I say it's a huge risk for Anthony, because if Anthony, this is my point, if somehow you get caught and knocked uh, out by Ruiz, the pressure. then there's no, then all we end up getting it maybe one day is, is Wilder Fury to, but here's my thing, you're with the zone. Yes, sir. Who, by the way, you're very important over there. Right? You are the second, in all due respect, probably the second most important fighter they have. Mm -hmm. Canelo is probably the most important fighter in the world. Biggest deal of all time, mm -hmm. right? And he's earned that. And he was great on Saturday night. Yeah, yeah. They need to start calling it Dazen. I, I want you to put this through. I, I, is it just easier? It's just, I don't think that as a serious sports network, you can say you're called Dazen. Some, sometimes it's gotta I be Dazen. 
I think so. Now, sometimes I forget that it's the zone, and I, from the logo, I can't remember. So what does do it doesn't indicate what it is? Do you call it dozen as well? No, I it's. The zone, but in your head you see Dazzin, but I see Dazzin, and then I get uh, thrown off, and I'm trying to wonder, and then I'm like, is it the zone? But but looking at those letters, it sometimes doesn't pop into my head. So you, maybe it's a situation where the slogan is uh, like maybe, if you want to get in the zone, watch Dazzin. Exactly. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> like by the way, I like it. see, that's how you know he's smarter than your everyday fighter, well, right? Uh, there. You yeah. know, if you need and, anyone for marketing campaigns, <laughs> yeah, so, or, that was pretty good. And also too, because I've got, we've all had a chance to have plenty of boxers in here. I mean, legitimately humble. And, and it seems okay. like that's something that you strive to be. And I don't think he's as humble as you <laughs> think. Well, it's all relatively speaking. Hey, where's my right? coffee, man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not because you have to kind of be your own promoter in boxing, yeah, right? but, yeah, I, but yeah. I, just get, I, I get the sense that it, that's something that's important to you. Yeah, look, just be yourself. N number one, be yourself. Um, just be who you are. Look, if there's nothing wrong with being glitz and glam and having loads of character, for me, I'm just myself. Calm, collected, and just likes to have a good time. Um, I know what struggle's about. I know mm -hmm. what the good life. I've seen that through boxing. People have shown me the good life as well. So it's a blessing. And um, I take it with a pinch of salt. I don't get too far ahead of myself, or I don't get too depressed and get too below myself. I'll, I'll tell you what. I think the one thing that's fascinating right now is there is the opportunity for the first time since the Tyson Lewis yes. era for the heavyweight division to be truly meaningful. Truly meaningful. I believe you guys have made that as difficult as humanly possible yeah. by all having deals on different networks. I agree. Um, you, uh, Tyson's with ESPN, you're with DAZN, Dazen, um, <laughs> and, and Deontay's with Showtime, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And I do think that presents a problem, but the, frankly, all three of you are incredibly likable guys. All have interesting different stories, yeah. and yeah. all are really good. Yeah, like, I truly didn't believe Tyson Fury. Did you believe Fury was as good before the Wilder fight? To me, that showed me he was at a different level than I realized he was. Even, even when he fought Klitschko, I didn't realize he was that good. No, that was one of the ugliest fights I've ever seen. But he managed to get in there and disrupt the, one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, one of the longest reigning champions. Uh, Same I'm with Wilder. He had a break. He, um, he came back. He lost so much weight. Now, nah, he's definitely not ready. Wilder's been knocking guys out since day one. He went in there, played with Wilder for some rounds as well. I was just like, this guy's talented, but this is why I want to challenge these guys. Me giving them offers is not to say I'm guaranteed to beat these and it's going to be an easy night's work. It's to say, let me challenge myself against the best heavyweights. And so I don't finish my career and think, damn, what would happen if I would have boxed these guys? It's good to kind of show myself and what I'm about, where I need to improve, or if I'm really as good as I feel I am against guys like Fury and Wilder. All right, now I want to play the what-if game with you. We're talking with Anthony yes, Joshua, the undefeated heavyweight champion of the world. Um, if somebody could get Tyson, not Fury, Mike Tyson, to come out of retirement and fight you, would you do it? No. No? no. What if somebody gave him like $100 million, he got in great shape, he's in great shape anyway, and said, I want to take you on, you wouldn't do it? I respect him too much. Because you think you'd kick his ass right now is what you're saying. I'm not even going to mention. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, Mike is 52. Man, like I respect that guy so much, man. Have you had a chance to meet him? No. I'm really? Thinking, haven't met I him yet? I swear, no, never met him. He's a great guy. I think. Yeah. You, you and he's in a good place now. He's a very good place. He's in a good place. And he's making tons of money with weed in California right now. <laughs> it's crazy, right? <laughs> oh, my God. How crazy? And, but it's so pure. It, like, it seems to me Mike Tyson is the best when he's at his natural... Like, when it was boxing, it was pure about the, for the sport. No business. And he was at his best. Now he's in California. Wait, California? Yeah. Doing his thing with cannabis. Um... <laughs> It's pure, it's natural. You know, he's, it. he's, and it's, and if anyone knows him at all, that was always, although Mike has had drug problems before, mm. marijuana was a drug that actually always calmed him, and really he was someone who needed it medicinally. Yeah. So the fact that he's now doing so well with it is great. It's good to see. Uh, have you, uh, what about other, uh, do you have any other what ifs, Michael? Sorry, I took away, I jumped in. No, after no, that mic. was my one, because I've always wondered why Tyson wouldn't want to cash in. Because yeah, Michael thinks George he can get Foreman one more did. <laughs> George Foreman cashed in. But George, yeah, George was two. When he started, when George started his comeback, Michael, right. he was like 42, 43. Yeah. Michael's fit. Yeah, Mike's but George 52. was kind of fat then. Mike Tyson's in great shape now. And used but to be an unbelievable fighter. I just have to remind you, you know, Mike's my favorite athlete of all time. His last fight was a loss to Kevin McBride. Yeah. I mean, a guy who's not even a capable fighter. Okay, right. let me ask you Thanks this question. Thanks, McBride would have done better. Yeah. Let me ask you this question. Could Kevin Rooney, Teddy Atlas, make another Mike Tyson? I think they need custom auto. Yeah, I, I, mm. yeah, I think there's two missing ingredients there. 
Go on. And Cuss. Yeah. And Jacobs. And, and, my, and, my, and Mike. No, and Mike. Mike is just a... So could have Mike been with any trainer in the world and become as good as he was? But once That's he lost Ro Rooney, though, Anthony, he wasn't the same guy. This is what I'm saying. So, the trainers, we only are a product of who are coaching us, really. I know, but Mike was such a freak in it. It was such a perfect storm. It was a perfect storm. Of Tyson being this kid from this background that had yeah. these problems, and then these people who were able to take this pain and harness oh. it with this athleticism. I heard that customer was a psychologist, so he knew how to mentor, um, build that fire within Mike Tyson. But they said, Mike said that, but when customer passed away, he didn't teach him how to turn that fire off. Mm. So that was where he... Well, I, I think he was at a stage in his life where, unlike he was with Floyd Patterson and Torres yeah. before that, Mike was a different kind of dude. So and different. then he died, mm. and Cus dies, Jimmy Jacobs dies. Yeah. There's no one around anymore. And also, did those guys really care? I'm not saying they didn't care. But did they do the work to take care of him emotionally? Or were they just focused on, we need to move him up the ranks as quickly as but possible? that's what it's about, because I come from the stable of boxing. But luckily, I went the Olympic route, where it became a bit more professionalized, mm -hmm. organized physios, nutritionists. But when I was in my amateur club, it was a bit more grim. How do we get this boy from A to B by right. any means possible? And you are just, like, taking you around all the local gyms, sparring the fighters, fighting. I sparred Tyson Fury. Um, Derek Chisora, all the UK fight, but luckily I went the Olympic route and I think they kind of polished me up a bit and made my eyes peel to all the trappings of mm. the boxing world. Well, and Mike, and Mike didn't make the Olympics. No, so he went in the gutter way through the hardship. And you look at this, for instance, Dylan White, he didn't go the Olympic route. He's gone through the hardship way. And you can kind of see in terms of character, he does things the hard way to well, get Well, you saw in Cra even Crawford didn't make the Olympics. Crawford's yeah, route has been, has been different as well. Yes. All right, real quick, in, in the UK, just be, be blunt with us. Oh. How how big an a, like how a list are you as a star in the UK period right now? I'm about a D cat. <laughs> D list. <laughs> I'm about a D list. No, have you met everyone there is to meet in the UK in terms of celebrity? I shook the Queen's hand. Okay, okay. see, that's, that's, <laughs> that's big. That's pretty big. Yeah, I shook the Queen's hand, which was an honor. Um, no Harry or William yet. Yeah, I met those guys. Both of them. All right. And the main thing is, my mom still loves me. That's what I'm saying. I'm doing my family proud, and that, that's all that matters at the end of the day. So, no, I'm not, I'm not into this, this celebrity stuff so much. You know, Harry had his baby today. Yes, he did. Congratulations, a baby boy. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. If he, I've got a son as well, so if he ever needs a playmate, someone to chill with, my, I'll drop my boy around. So, uh, congratulations to the Royals. It's Have amazing. you met Ricky Gervais? Uh, not yet, no. Okay. All right. Well, you're, 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 I think oh, are you going to ask him everybody he's ever met, Peter? <laughs> have you ever met, have you ever oh met Cristiano goodness. Ronaldo? Yes. You met Cristiano Ronaldo? Yeah, that's my boy. Really? Yes, yeah, CR7. Awesome. That's my boy. That's a pretty good one, too. Who's your, who's your athletic brand sponsorship? Uh, Under Armour. Uh, you're doing okay. <laughs> you're going to be okay. What would you be if you weren't a boxer? <laughs> what would I be if I weren't a boxer? An actor. Boy. No. <laughs> Do you know what I would be doing? Construction. Construction? Yeah, in a building game. Okay. Like from a design standpoint or like lifting up plywood? Uh, not design, but more like um, project management. Like I would form a team together, plasterers, electricians, plumbers, bricklayers, um, scaffolding team, and then create maybe the ESPN building. Hopefully one. Oh, would, nice. you allow, would you allow Drake in your dressing room before a fight? No, you shouldn't. <laughs> if you're telling... I know I shouldn't. If you're telling me that, I know I shouldn't. You know about the Drake curse. Uh, of yeah. course. We're it's, about it's it crazy, all the time. right? It's crazy. It's real, though. Yeah, yeah keep I away. Think it is. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not worth it. You don't want to be the guy to test it. This is what I'm saying. But he had all four football logos for the championship games. They both went to overtime. The guys what's, didn't well, know you know what what's to do. weird, actually? So I took a picture with Drake. I, oh, said, no. I thought you did. When do you take it? Before Miller got banned. Because Miller had his drug test, and then the whole fight went to pot. See, there it is. <laughs> so wait, the fight got canceled? <laughs> yeah, the fight got canceled. Now, hold on. Now, uh, I, you did, you, I, know, I saw you just compared the heavyweight division to Game of Thrones. Okay. Yeah, are yeah. you are you deep into Game of Thrones yourself, or are you, you know, just using the reference? I'm just using the reference. I haven't caught up on it. <laughs> Do you know what? How class would it be if I came out with the Game of Thrones theme song as oh, my walk-in? It would be... Would so, it be menace? It would be beyond menace, but you would need to bring out... 
I mean, listen, it wouldn't be as good if I'm you. Yeah. Have you ever come out with Stormzy before? Of course. You've come out with Stormzy before. That's my boy. Okay, uh, well, I, well I'm, maybe I'm a B-lister then, not D. Yeah. Maybe I'm a B. <laughs> if you've come out with Stormzy, you're at least well, a B-lister. I'm a B-lister. Anthony Joshua will be A-list on June 1st, Saturday at Madison Square Garden. He faces Andy Ruiz Jr. for the heavyweight championship of the world. Tickets at MSG.com. You have to go there soon because this fight is going to sell out boxing in new york it's in our soul anthony we thank you for coming by the studio we really do and good luck thank you sir take care you cheers man